Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about accessing and assessing GIS metadata using the Python programming language. This is a disclaimer. I'm not a programming expert. I'm not a Python expert, but I've put together some code that can be used as a starting point or a jumping off point so that you can use GIS, uh, so you can use Python to assess and eventually evaluate GIS metadata, metadata entries within the confines of a personal or file geodatabase. So, one of the big problems in the large-scale assessment of GIS metadata is that we don't have any means to assess it efficiently. You can see in my test.gdb right here, I've got a number of layers here. I've got 15 to 17 layers or so. You can see the summary, the description, um, all these. But if someone asked me, what data has the oldest publication date? I would have to go through each of these individual entries, or I might be able to put it in a preview or description or the contents there, but I would have to go through each of these, copy it to a spreadsheet, and sort them, and or even eyeball this. And it, may, and it may be fairly easy to do this for you know 15 entries or 15 uh, feature classes here, but imagine doing this for 100 feature classes amongst five different databases. We might ask questions like, what data has the most incomplete metadata? There's 400 individual metadata entries. Who wants to go through all of those? What data has no processing steps or data quality attached to it? Who wants to go through all of that? So I've started to do some research to figure out ways to do this. I previously did this with VBA and Arc Objects and have migrated this to Python. So what I decided to do was develop some Python code that does this. Python is a scripting language used to process, you know, basically to perform GIS functionality. We have a Python command line within our catalog. We, have a, we also have it within ArcGIS. So you can see here, and I can type in commands or whatever I need to do here. There are a couple of great Python, um, ArcGIS and Python programming books that I've used for a lot of my skill set. But when it came to the GIS metadata assessment and evaluation, there isn't a big knowledge base for this right now. So this is, this is what I you know, decided to do. And we're going to write a program where we write a couple of individual entries from the metadata to an Excel spreadsheet for all of these layers. So they're all going to be in one place so I can look at this and sort these and assess these and make decisions from this. Because right now this is just, you know, data. So we want to turn this data into information, into knowledge, and eventually to action. So I showed before that I have a Python command line right there. Uh, Python is typically installed with a regular ArcGIS installation, so I can just type in Python. There's a number of different Python editors out there. This is my Python 2.7.8 shell. I'm not an expert to know what the latest and greatest version of Python is. I just know that it works for what I'm trying to do here. I can go to File, Open, and I can open my actual program, and you can see I've got a program here. And this is a program that I wrote, developed. I actually created this from Model Builder at one point in time and just kind of built from that. So you can see what it does here. Um, I'm going to have this open here. But I have a summary, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file called Metadata Training in, it's going to be called summary.csv. Okay, so you can see right here, um, under Python, this is summary. And actually, I'm going to delete this old one. So we'll actually... So you'll see what we create. Okay, so I have nothing there right now. Okay, I have output. I have nothing there right now. So one of the big problems that I've seen is that Python doesn't interact directly with the GIS database, that test.gdb. So what I had to do was export each of the metadata entries to an XML format and then access the XML format using something called element tree and parse. Okay. So I've got a couple commands right here. I have summary.open. Um, I've got metadata training. 
Python in summary, and the W means I'm going to write to it. And I'm going to write to this file. Summary.write means I'm going to write to it. File name, title, and we're going to look up the file name, the title, the abstract, the search keywords, the purpose, and the POC, and the backslash N means we create a new line. I'm going to look at my workspace here. Okay, my workspace is going to be C colon front slash metadata training exercises test. Now, one of the caveats that we have is that these can all, we can create GUIs so that you can go through and create the location for the workspace, for the translators and for the output. I hard coded these here myself. Okay, so we can create GUIs where you can use a folder icon to search for these. I'm not that good and I wanted to kind of show the basics for this. Okay, so if you have this program and I'll put my email address at the end of this tutorial so I can send this to you, you might want to change this to where you're saving it or create the GUI so that this workspace is going to be the basically the path where you store it to in the folder selection. Okay, this is very big. This is just a very basic, uh, you know, skeleton for moving forward. Um, what I have here, these commands here, I'm just going to loop through the database, that aforementioned database uh, in my particular workspace, and I'm going to look for feature classes here. That translator, okay, this is very important. You can see the translator. In my previous exercise, I talked about translators, and we're going to convert from the ArcGIS metadata to FGDC, and then we're going to write this to metadata training output and something underscore dot XML. You notice right here in output, I have nothing except for the different GML, FGDC, ISO, and 19139 formats that I've talked about in my previous exercise. So all of these new XML files are going to be written to this particular output data uh, output folder. This is FGDC, and this is going to be extremely important because remember when I talked about XML metadata and translators, we have different paths here. Okay, how do I access the title? How do I access the abstract? How do I access these particular search keywords? We have different paths. And for the title, it's at ID info, citation, site info, and title. And if we go back to this one right here, the FGDC element, you can see how I access this. Okay, this is how I programmatically access it here. So I have ID info, so you can see the tag for ID info, and remember these are nested tags. I have citation, site info, and within that I see title. The title here is SCL PL for this particular for this particular feature class, and you can see where title begins and where title ends. Okay, for abstract, it's a little further down. It's under abstract, descript, abstract. Okay, down here. So I need to access it. They're both within ID info, but you notice that abstract isn't within citation. So you notice citation ends before description begins. The main thing that we need to be aware of is how we programmatically ask, access these. Because if I look at this, say using my 19139, and I type in the word, let me just say title. I'm going to do control F, title. I see title, but I see something under CI citation, citation, MD, identification. Okay, so that path is going to be different for my 19139 implementation as opposed to my FGDC. Okay, so these paths are going to be dependent upon the translator that you use. Okay, if I were to type in the word, say, abstract, where's abstract? Okay, here's abstract right here. Okay, so my abstract is in a slightly different place here. If I were to type in ID info, ID info, can't find anything. Okay? And you notice this is one of the subcategories of my metadata. It's the second one, the second, second one down in my hierarchy. I don't even have anything that says ID info in my 
19139 implementation or XML here. Okay. So it's very important that you know how to programmatically access each of the metadata elements. I'm most familiar with the CSDGM or the FGDC implementation of metadata. Okay. So I access the title, the abstract, the ID info, um, the search keywords, the purpose, and the point of contact. And this is just some basic Python code. I'm going to actually print this in this shell over here while we're running this. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to print this as well as I'm also going to be writing it to my I'm also going to be writing it to my uh, CSV file. So you can see that summary.write. I'm going to write the feature class with the comma, with the title, with the abstract. And you can see these commas here are hard coded, meaning that they are um, comma separated values. So wherever it sees a comma, it's basically going to put it into a, a new cell or a new column in this case here. Um, I have a couple of just, you know, things here with catches and replaces. So if I see commas in there, I'm just going to replace it with a space. So it doesn't think wherever it sees a comma in the title or point of contact, it's going to move it over. So I just do a little find and replace. And I also put in the word none. So if it's not none, um, none is a designated keyword in Python. So if it finds nothing there, it's just going to write the word none instead of having it as, as blank. Okay. And when I'm done here, I'm going to write this and you notice Python's hierarchy when it runs loops is that it's indented. So you can see it's this is indented over, I believe, uh, w once. So it's going to go back to this new loop that I have right here for the data sets. I'm just going to go through each feature class and all of my data sets and run this over and over again. And it's finally going to close. Uh, without any further ado, I'm just going to run this. I'm going to run this Python shell. Let's see if it does anything. Okay, it's got to open up the database. Okay, it's got to make sure we open up metadata training exercises test.gdb and it should go through and work its way through. Click on F5 here, click OK. I had to run the module. Okay, run that module instead. Click F5. And you can see it's starting to write here. So it looked at the admin, the search keywords, time zones. So these are just my print statements. A lot, a lot of when I debug Python, I just use the print statement to figure out how far that I got here. But you can see admin. The title is equal to this. The abstract is equal to this. The search keywords, the purpose, the POC. Here's the next feature class. So if I could, when I go back to my folder here, now you can see all these brand new XML files that were created just now. Okay, all these brand new XML files that were created and then accessed. When I go to my Python, you can see summary. If I were to double click on this, this CSV file, we can see right here. So I've got all the layers that were created. I guess there's about 13 layers that were created. And these layers are both at the database level, at both the database level, and then within this feature data set. So you can see the colleges and universities, the correctional institutions the swine lagoons and the schools. Okay, and I can look at all of these here. So you can see the abstract for my admin, the abstract for my colleges and universities, the abstract for my correctional institutions. Um, who's the point of contact for all of these? And as you can see for this one here, I've only created, <coughs> I only wrote you know, five different columns, you know, five different metadata entries to this, but I could write as many as I want right here. I can start to sort these. So if I look at 
uh, vertical accuracy or horizontal accuracy where I have some numbers or sort these. You can see I have some instances here where I have some nuns here. Okay, this was done intentionally to make sure it was able to catch some of the nuns. Okay, or where we didn't have values in that particular Im implementation of metadata. So now I've got all of the metadata for all 13 elements sitting in one place. So now I can assess it, I can evaluate it, I can create histograms, I can create sort these, I can do whatever I want. And in conclusion, it'd be very, very difficult to create something like this as quickly as I have. Okay, so it's really interesting how we've done this and in you know, easy ways and efficient ways to assess GIS metadata because the skill set and the knowledge base isn't really out there right now. So if you want to contact me for this particular script, it's T Mulroon, T M U L R O O N at nccu.edu. And like I said before, you're going to have to change some of the paths. And especially for you very slick, you know, programmers, you'll have to, you know, you can create some GUIs so that you can, uh, you can make the, the translators in your output locations uh, interactive.